we now arrive at the subject of an amino acid's isoelectric point, which is abbreviated as PI. Magnum PI. No, I'm just kidding. It's just regular PI. Simply defined, an amino acid's isoelectric point, or PI, is the pH at which that amino acid has no net charge. Let's take a look at this example. If we look at alanine, this amino acid right here, in the form shown here, we can see that it has a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on the nitrogen. What's its net charge? Well, zero, of course, because plus one and minus one cancel each other out. That's what I'm talking about when I say that an amino acid's isoelectric point is the pH at which it has no net charge. I'm saying that the pH at which the amino acid's net charge is zero is that particular amino acid's isoelectric point. Okay, so how do we calculate an amino acid's pi? For amino acids that don't have acidic or ionizable side chains, it's just the average of their OH and NH3 plus pKa values. Let's take the example of alanine, shown here. You can see that alanine's pKa for the carboxylic acid OH is 2.34. The pKa of the amine group is 9.69. Because alanine does not have an ionizable side chain, that is, it doesn't have a side chain that you could protonate or deprotonate or that can act as a base or an acid. It's just got a boring old carbon side chain. Because that's the kind of side chain it has, the isoelectric point PI is just the average of these two pKa values. That's it. So I just take 2.34 plus 9.69, get a number, 12.03, divided by 2. That number, 6.02, is alanine's isoelectric point PI. So what in the world does that mean? Simply put, it means that at pH 6.02, alanine will exist more or less completely in this form right here, having no net charge. Below pH 6.02, you might remember, there's more and more H plus around, which means that we're going to protonate this O minus to some degree. If you protonate this O minus, you get rid of the minus charge. So what is alanine's net charge at low pH? It's plus one. At higher pH, we start to see less and less H plus around, and eventually we deprotonate this NH3 plus and turn it into an NH2. So if you have a neutral NH2 here, what is alanine's net charge? It's minus one. So once again, at pH 6.02, which is alanine's isoelectric point, it will exist exclusively in this form. As we get lower and lower pH, we start to protonate this O minus, which gives alanine more and more a net plus one charge. As we get higher and higher pH, we start to deprotonate stuff. We remove one of these protons off of the NH3 plus, making it an NH2 giving alanine an overall net minus one charge. I hope that makes sense, okay. Now we arrive at the magical question, issued really by me, but hopefully also by you, my nebulous internet student. How do we calculate the PI for an amino acid with an ionizable side chain? What's the answer? Well, you calculate the average pKa values of the two ionizable groups that have the same charge as each other, obviously. Now I assume that if you're like me, you're probably right now looking at this statement and thinking, what? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Let's do some examples to hopefully solidify this. We'll start by looking at lysine, which has this structure. I'll ask you this question. If we look at this molecule's ionizable groups, which are this OH, this NH3+, and the other NH3+, which ones, or which two of these groups have the same charge as each other? Does the OH have the same charge as an NH3+, no. 
Does this NH3 plus have the same charge as this OH? No. So which two groups have the same charge as each other? Ah, it's these two NH3 pluses. They both have a plus one charge, don't they? So how do we calculate lysine's PI? We take the average pKa value of the two NH3 plus groups, that is the two groups that have the same charge as each other, and we completely ignore the OH. So let's see if we can do that. Here we've got the pKa value of this NH3 plus and the pKa value of this NH3 plus, we need to calculate the average. We just add them both together, giving us a 19.74, and divide them by 2. That gives us 9.87. So once again, what in the holy bleep does that mean? It means that at 9.87, lysine molecules in solution will exist in a state that has no net average charge. Below pH 9.87, lysines will become more and more positively charged. And above pH 9.87, lysines will become more and more negatively charged. That's what it means. Let's do another example. Here's glutamic acid. Once again, I ask the question, which two ionizable groups have the same charge as each other? Once again, I'm looking at the two OHs here and the NH3+. Those are the ionizable groups. In this case, I only have one NH3+, and I've got two OHs. So the NH3+, here in this case, is the odd man out. So for lysine, we calculate the isoelectric point by taking the average pKa values of the two OH groups, and we ignore the NH3+. And now I reemphasize what I said in the previous slide. The isoelectric point is the pH at which this molecule has a net average charge of zero. If we calculate this thing out, we take nine point, or sorry, we take 2.19, 4.25, add them together. We get 6.44 divided by 2, and the isoelectric point of glutamic acid becomes 3.22. So that means that at pH 3.22, glutamic acids in solution will exist in a state that has no net average charge. Below pH 3.22, glutamic acid will become more and more positively charged. And above pH 3.22, glutamic acid will become more and more negatively charged. Are you ready for some examples? Good. So I want you to calculate the isoelectric point, or PI of each of the following amino acids. I should give you a hint. You're going to have to use the pKa table found on table 23.3 .3 in your book and also found in our earlier PowerPoint lecture on this chapter. But don't worry, I'm going to guide you through this problem over the next few slides and do a couple of these examples with you. I'll let you do the rest, of course. So here's my step-by-step -step formula on how to calculate an amino acid's isoelectric point. Step one, draw the molecule fully protonated. That is, with all of its carboxylic acid groups as OHs, its amide groups as NH2s, and its amine groups as NH3 pluses. For our first example, asparagine, that's what it's going to look like. I have an amide group over here, I just leave it as an NH2. NH3 plus on the amine groups and OHs as OHs instead of O minuses. That's step one. Step two is using the information on table 23.3, we write down the pKa values for each OH and NH3 plus. Amid NH2s do not have pKa values on table 23.3. What are those pKa values for asparagine? Here they are. Step three. If you only have two pKa values to work with, then just calculate your average, and you're done. Here's the average between these two pKa values. 2.02 .02 plus 8.84 divided by 2 gives us 5.43 as the isoelectric point for asparagine. Step four, remember what that number actually means. It means that at pH 5.43, asparagine will ex have a net zero charge. What that means is that right at that pH 5.43,
the spare gene will have an NH3 plus here and an O minus over here. So it will have a net zero charge. Below that pH, we'll start to see OHs, or the O minus is getting protonated. So we'll start to see it look like this form. It will have a net positive charge. Above that pH, we'll start to see more and more NH3 pluses get deprotonated to give neutral NH2s, with O minuses being here, giving us a net minus one charge.